Hi YouTube. So today what I'm going to do, I haven't done a video in a while, and what I'm going to do is I want to show how to do a really simple um, fractal in in uh, in Blender. Um, I found out how to do this just recently. It is extremely super uber simple, and I thought it would be cool to show you. I actually posted an instructable that shows how to do this. But the Instructable, it is actually rather hard to explain how to do this. So I'm going to just kind of show a really simple way on how to do this. So without further ado. How to make video games with Blender. So I've been a little bit uh, preoccupied with that. And I'll just show you a little bit of what I've been making. Um, this is, I wanted to make a flight sim, so I built this thing, it's um, sort of like an osprey, the wings don't have animation yet, they're supposed to swivel down when I take off and stuff like that, but so far it's pretty fun to play with, um, it basically is kind of like a helicopter, um, except that it's made to fly like a plane as well, so I added in, um, come on, come on, you can do it, there we go, and let's see, it has sort of a, kind of a hovering, let's see, I can take us up to a better view, but, one's a little aircraft I call the Sparrow. There we go. Let's ease it down, ease it down. Let's see, I've got a pilot view. And I have a free look that I programmed into it. Ooh, touchdown. Holy crap. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, oh, fuck me. Yeah, I haven't figured out how to fucking land my own craft that well. Thankfully, it doesn't have those explosions that happen normally in uh, real <coughs> and sort of a real sim. But right now, it's still very. Come on, yeesh. Anyway, that's the flight sim, which I can't frelling land for my life dependent on it. And this is the other one. This is what I started with, which is a little tank simulator, which is where I kind of started with. This one, I added some sound. I got the tires to move with it. The tracks don't move yet, but Eventually, I'll get the tracks to move with it. I just kind of haven't been haven't been working on this, and I have several different camera angles. Um, I seem to have this problem where these are the cat toys, as one friend calls them. One problem is that when I fire the, uh, the main gun, it's like, it's like if you're at too close, driver view, If you're too close to the target, it's like the shell doesn't arm. I also don't have a delay on this so that it'll have like a, you know, where you're reloading speed so you can fire all day with this main gun, but there we go. Gaming's pretty, pretty fun. So anyway, what I wanted to show 
actually today was how to do, um, let's see, how to make um, some fractals. And fractals come in handy for more things that you can think of, but right now, let's see. I just want to do a really, really kind of quick tutorial on this because I found this was really easy. Um, let's see, I also have, I also am working on tutorials for um, instructables.com, which is really kind of cool. I guess I got a few on there. And so that's been nice. So all I'm doing is just kind of manipulating this object here, this little square. And the reason I kind of am doing this is that where I kind of found these fractals come in handy is for a project I did over here. Let's see where it is. Um, Instructables. This is one of the instructable things that I was working on, but um, this is, I was doing like a steampunk like hat thing that would go in a hat essentially, and to make these propellers that I wanted, and I wanted them to sit on it, I basically used a kind of a way of doing a fractal and I don't know if this is the you know particular way but this is a really really easy way of doing this and as you can see if I go over the top let me make the screen bigger found out if you press shift and spacebar, you can basically make the entire screen widen up, which is really, really nice. Um, but basically this is one blade, and then what I'll end up doing is you um, add an array to the blade, and then you'll add a, what is it, um, an offset object, and then basically a curve and you can end up making these really cool um, fractal-like things. Like for example, this will go up or down. Um, if you don't have a, um, let's see, well, I'll show you in a minute how to do that, but you can use these for all sorts of things, because in this case you can make this feathered out effect. Um, but there's all sorts of other ways that you could do this. Um, if you had added more blades, I mean, I could do, make this look um, with like lots and lots of spokes on it. And since it'll go up or down, you can make these spirally staircase, staircase kind of things. So I'm gonna go down, we'll, I'll show you kind of how to do that. It's really, really super easy. Uh, I don't even, I don't think I even need this light for the camera, I'll just get rid of them. So I'm going to grab this object here. Now to do what I did with the, the blades, I'm just going to go, and I'm going to move that point there. So I'm going to go press A, and I'm just going to grab all of them at the same time. And I'm not going to be perfect on this at all. I'm just going to move that point to right there. Next, I'm going to go down here in my wrench, grab an array modifier. Let's just add like, you know, six on there. And then I'm going to go add empty. And we can just do plain axis. We'll add, move this empty like right down there. And then, let's see, I'm gonna go over to here, grab 
see, relative object, and then we're going to grab empty. And what happens when you tell basically all of the, your, whatever your arrayed object that it's going to go off of this empty as it's kind of a, an offset, it will start to kind of track wherever that empty is, but relative to its distance too. Not too much right at the moment. Let's see here. Let me just bring it back there. Okay, and the last little step here is add a B Bezer circle, I think it is. And then I'm going to go over to here, add, grab my array again, add modifier, a curve. And then our object is going to be the circle, which makes, this is where it gets all fucked up and weird, is that you're just like, what the hell happened? This is so freaking weird. And if you're trying to make a specific object, like, um, like that, um, what's it called? The propeller blade. Propeller blade will look really, really weird. But because of that offset, what you can do is you kind of have to mess around. This is the best way I can figure out how to do this is just to screw around until you get your object to look kind of the way you want it to look again. Because when you when you do this, as soon as you do it, it's sort of like it just gets, you know, all whacked out. And only way that I can come up with on how to basically get it to look right is to just mess around with these these little parts here and let's see this is really really it's kind of frustrating at first um, and you kind of have to play around with maybe where, you know, where things are, because you have that end piece. So when I go into tab, it'll instantly go back out. So, I mean, if you tab out, you can edit the object a bit. Let's see here. On the bright side is if you... You know, if you want, you can just mess around with these. You may end up finding something like a really weird thing you want to do that you didn't even really come for, but it works really good for making, like, goofy, weird levels. Um, just objects that just kind of look interesting. Let's see here if I can... Trying to get it back. To kind of give an example of how to get your object to basically look closer to what it was, but... There we go. Um, what I just did was I just scaled out the, the circle. Let's see.
top here, I want to bring it somewhat close, make it look kind of like the, the feathering kind of effect. <laughs> you can get some really, really kind of weird effects with it. I actually use it for, um, sometimes if I want to make a propeller blades on an aircraft that are kind of, um, like, Maybe they didn't turn out the way I wanted them to. There we go. I will actually kind of mess around until I get the, the, um, where I want them to be. And then, let's see, I'm gonna press shift and spacebar. Go over to this object and I'm just gonna add some more. And if you use a simple object, I mean, you can see how this can get kind of weird, but you can make all these, like, really, really weird, you know, shapes with it. They're just really kind of fun, basically. But anyway, that is just a really quick how to make some kind of weird fractal-like looking things. So, I don't know, I hope this video helps and have some fun.